This BCNDP government has created what they call a climate budget, one that forecasts increasing natural gas production and declining natural gas prices. They are spending billions of our dollars on responding to the devastation caused by climate change by accepting less actual value for fossil fuels we are extracting that are causing the climate emergency and making up for it by ramping up the production of the climate emergency. Then came the astonishing debate in question period over the past couple of days. Last summer, I read the desperate pleas of my colleagues seeking relief from wildfires. Then those pleas turned to the devastation caused by the floods, the stifling heat dome, and the stifling heat dome that took hundreds of lives of British Columbians. This is a challenging time, and we are all trying to act in response to the terrible and illegal attack by Russia on Ukraine. We know that at the root of this conflict is energy, and specifically fossil fuel production and distribution. My colleagues in the official op opposition have been asking important questions about divesting Russian assets from British Columbia pension investments. Somehow, though, these questions morphed to the permits for the expansion of fracking, gas liquefaction, and exports in British Columbia. To be clear, we have no existing capacity to replace the loss of fossil fuel energy in Europe to make up for the supply that has now been cut off from Russia. As a response, though, the official opposition is suggesting that we ramp up permits of fossil fuel production in BC while totally ignoring the reality that fossil fuels are exacerbating the climate emergency that has been so catastrophic for communities across our province. We have the Minister of Environment and Climate Change Strategy trying to limit the impact of climate change. At the same time, the Minister of Energy is ramping up production. That is a climate change budget in British Columbia. We have an official opposition that is apparently so out of touch that they're leveraging a devastating war in Europe to try to increase the LNG industry in British Columbia at a time when we are facing a climate crisis caused in large part by the extraction and combustion of fossil fuels. Let's add some context, shall we? The report on the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released this week said the following. Quote, any further delay will mean missing a brief and rapidly closing window of opportunity to secure a livable and sustainable future for all, end quote. As Ho Sung Lee, the chair of the IPC, said, quote, this report is a dire warning about the consequences of inaction. It shows that climate change is a grave and mounting threat to our well-being and a healthy planet. Our actions today will shape how people adapt and nature responds to increasing climate risks. Half measures are no longer an option." End quote. As Antonio Guterres, uh, the United Nations Secretary General, said, quote, I have seen many scientific reports in my time, but nothing like this. Today's IPCC report is an atlas of human suffering and a damning indictment of failed climate leadership. People and the planet are getting clobbered by climate change. Nearly half of humanity is living in the danger zone now. Many ecosystems are at the point of no return now. Unchecked carbon pollution is forcing the world's most vulnerable on a frog march to destruction now. The facts are undeniable. This abdication of leadership is criminal. The world's biggest polluters are guilty of arson of our only home." End quote. As U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said, quote, we know the significant risks climate change poses to our health and, well and safety, and we know the climate plays a decisive role in shaping the trajectory of peace and prosperity in the world. While political and economic decisions are the primary drivers 
of conflict, climate change will increase as a threat to global and local stability. End quote. I could go on. However, I don't think I need to say anything else to underscore the complete absurdity that has been displayed in this assembly over the past couple of days. The fact that the official opposition would advance the notion that we should use these intersecting crises, now including a war in Europe, to expand fossil fuel production and combustion, creating a bigger climate emergency, bigger town-destroying fires, more dangerous deluges, is asinine. We should be doing everything we can to transition as quickly as possible, not making new investments in fossil fuel infrastructure, and most certainly we should not be investing public money to subsidize multi-billion dollar multinational fossil fuel corporations. It is important to be honest about the fact that we aren't creating or changing systems in BC to reduce the output of fossil fuel extraction or the impact of our forestry practices. We are spending on a disaster response. There is absolutely nothing in the budget for conservation financing. And the biggest increase in funding under, the climate, un, under climate change is for the Clean BC Program for Industry. The climate actions in this budget are largely inequitable. PST ex exemptions and rebates on zero emission vehicles and heat pumps require you first to be able to afford a vehicle and a house. And then you must be able to afford making an investment in those assets. Most British Columbians are finding it more difficult to stretch their income to meet their basic needs. They don't have the ability to grab a fish fistful of cash from an endless money pit. Most British Columbians can't just borrow billions of dollars against their future. Most of the climate actions in this budget are designed for the privileged, the CEOs, tenured university professors. We must be honest about our response to the climate emergency. If we are going to borrow billions of dollars against our future, then let's make sure it improves our future. The missed opportunity in Budget 2022 is not going further than a basic response, frankly a dishonest attempt to misrepresent the impact of the extreme weather events when what is needed are dramatic investments in transformative change to protect and improve our relationship with the land and water. 